In those days, the system at CBS was, was, while they didn't call it this, an apprentice system, where we junior reporters, and we had different titles in the correspondence. We were reporters, and the seniors were correspondents, and you had to work your way and earn the bigger title, that we were really uh, assigned to work with the seniors. And so we were being trained, and it was an excellent process. Uh, one we all accepted. We didn't argue against it. It was the system, and you went into the system. I, I think for me, and, and, I, and I, I know I can speak for the other women who came in in this affirmative action raking, um, we're just so excited to be in the door, just to be on the field, to be part of it, even though a, a lower echelon part of it um, was, it was something we just accepted and went with. So I was often assigned to Daniel Shore, who was a senior Watergate correspondent. And I did a lot of radio in the beginning. And then I was promoted to morning news reports. And eventually, as I got my own sources, um, which happens if you're on a story as long as I was able to be on that one, I was breaking my own stories. And finally, in a, in a normal arc, in a, in a way, got to be a correspondent and, and did my own stories. So I think it's a healthy system. I, I feel sorry for young people who come in and don't get that training. And that's what it is. You, you get to make mistakes, and you're not doing it in prime time on national television. Going back to Watergate, um, do you think that the, the fact that the, the, it was televised influenced the outcome at all? Oh, so many different things influenced the outcome. Television was a huge factor, no question. The Senate hearings were enormously important. The Democrats control the Senate, so the chairman, Irwin, of the Senate committee televised live every day, every day. You don't, you'd only get that on cable today. This was on the networks. Um, he was kind of hammering away and controlling information about the president that was coming out. Um, you had, though, um, a lot that was not televised that was very important. Um, you had Woodward and Bernstein, and they would report, and then the rest of the media would follow, including television, but they were huge. And then you had Judge Sirica. His courtroom was not wired for TV, and again, it was just through the reporting of what was happening in the courts. This is an often forgotten leg of, of the assault, really on Nixon at that time, and Sirica was enormously important. He made those, uh, the, the revelations in the early years very dramatic in his courtroom. He himself began to ask questions when he didn't think people, the uh, defendants were telling the truth. He would say, in effect, I don't believe you, the judge speaking from the bench. So it wasn't just television, but television spread the word, and in that sense, very important. And where were you during the, re the Nixon resignation? Well, I was around. Uh, the day of the resignation, I was assigned to Jerry Ford's house and stood outside at his house in an excellent position uh, to see any comings and goings. But after the resignation, all the TV trucks moved in, so I had to step back a little. Then the other reporters moved in. I had to step back a little more. By the end of the day, when Jerry Ford came out and made his statement, I was way back across the street, uh, craning my neck to see the little figures in the, in the distance. And I, was, I worked uh, on radio that night. 